Today we are with Richard on a mission to transplant trees from a garden bed down into the cow pastures. the lateral branches being pruned to strengthen the main stem. Very carefully, the tree seedlings are dug up with as many roots left intact as is possible. Since early childhood, Richard has enjoyed studying trees. He has been cultivating Eastwind's land for over a decade. When it comes to the planting and management of fruit and nut trees in this part of the Ozarks, Richard has a depth of knowledge and wealth of experience that is rare to find in a young person. He shares advice readily and is always willing to lend a hand when it comes to food. I myself have learned a great deal about growing food from Richard while working alongside him in our gardens. This video, just like all of my other videos on Eastwind's channel, is intended to give you a little idea of what it is like to live here, as well as showcase some of the practical skills that you can learn here. You don't want the roots to dry out. Are you gonna water them in once? Yeah, but this is just basically keeping them moist from now to the point when they're all planted. These chestnuts were started from seed gathered from trees that Richard established in 2010 and 2011. Chinese, American, and some European chestnut genetics are represented, as well as numerous Dunstan crosses, and the original trees came from various nurseries across the United States. Richard planted the seeds in late March in the most fertile soil of the gardens and mulched them heavily. Today it is late November, the trees are in a state of dormancy, and now is the time to transplant them and allow them their best chance at establishing before the warmth of spring comes upon them. On this particular day, the trees being transplanted are to form future fence lines in the pastures, as you can see in this image. The soil's just been easier to dig up here than there, so I'm just gonna put the biggest ones up here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I already, I already dug these holes yesterday because the ground was just so dry that it was hard to dig, you know, so I dug a little bit and then poured some water in, let it soak for a bit, then pounded the tea post in, and now the rest will be easier to dig too. This one. Now there's chestnuts from a number of different sources here, and so they're, you know, near each other, so a lot of these will be interesting crosses, which I have a lot to work with, and you see how they grow and produce over time. Yeah, I think I want to extend it out a little bit here, maybe very slightly. The depth is probably good. That they should be the same depth as they were. You dug them out so that the line between the top and the roots is at the same spot, because if you plant it too deep, that can encourage rot in the stem. You know, and that can happen a number of years later, so I mean, there's certain plants that you can plant deep, they'll grow roots off of the stems, but unless you know a plant to be like that, you don't want to do that. You want to plant at the same depth, and obviously planting it too shallow will mean there's roots exposed, and that's not good either. Get it in here. See, I sit it in here. This will be about the same depth. Extend these roots outward here so that, you know, they're not all bunched up. That, this will make it grow. A lot better to give the, all these lateral roots going out room to grow. And then, yeah, this will be about the right depth there. So then I'll start putting stuff in and putting stuff in carefully. Some water in. The water not only moistens the soil, but it also is needed to fill in the air gaps. The Solid. soil back, yeah, you don't want, you want the gaps roots. of air in there, so I'm pressing down a little. The plastic tubes protect the tree seedlings from deer and promote straight vertical growth. Today, another 15 chestnut trees bred from local stock have been planted. Of course, this is just the beginning for these trees. They will require extra care and attention in their first couple years. 
Now it is August 2018, and Richard is checking up on a number of hazelnuts and chestnuts that he planted along a fence line that is also a popular pathway to the creek. Check these ones here just to make sure that they're still holding well because these are the ones I did before. So, yeah, they're all good. Some of Johnson grass. I kind of kept some of it. With a little help from myself and Fran, we protect the young seedlings Richard planted. Right. Okay, so I put three stakes in each one. In case they're a little tougher to get in. Stable. On to the next one. Not take care of them. Yeah, I've taken buckets to wa of water to these twice when they're drying out. Oh, that wow. took a bit. I mean, yeah. once they're established, I don't think they'll need their roots to go down enough that in this bottom land, I think don't think they'll need any extra watering in the long term. You know why I planted these here when there's chestnuts there and tubes and chestnuts up there and hazelnuts are past there and around there, but it's like. Why these these three randomly? It's because of the power line here. The hazelnuts are bushes; oh. they won't go up to the power line. If I Great. planted chestnuts here, they get would be good. too close to the power line. Yeah. Why why is this work important to you? Give us fruit and nuts and other you know good things in the future. You know, it's a something that takes time to get going. I mean, the best time to have planted them would have been you know 30 years ago, but. Or you can whenever, but I mean, next best time is now. So, I mean, some of the chestnuts I put in in like 2010, 2011, you know, we're getting not a huge yields yet, but enough that I've started seeds. And that's when I started these new chestnut and hazelnut trees were seeds from the ones I got from the nurseries back then. And then, you know, I mean, plants from the nursery are kind of expensive, so can only get so many. But then when we can start our own, we can plant a whole bunch of them out all around. Mm -hmm.